when you're ready, then we'll get started. We'll go ahead and get our meeting started. Calling to order the Tuesday, March 5th, 2024, Bobber Cuba Unified School District Regular Governing Board meeting. Um, as I call the meeting to order, I just want to bring to everyone's attention, and I know this has been, hasn't been something we've done in the past, however, um, out of respect of the district, our superintendent, and all of our schools, and all of our students, and you as the parents who are here, um, just to share our vision statement with you. If you have not heard, the Barber Cube Unified School District uh, shares an overall vision that our students will be loved, encouraged, and prepared to take on the world by embracing our Himduk. Our mission statement is we create healthy, inspiring, motivating, developing, achieving graduates. Um, for those of you who may be unaware, uh, Himduk is the Thon Autumn word for meaning, of life, meaning our way of life. <clears throat> Our purpose statement, we create a nurturing, nurturing learning environment for every child every day with an additional commitment to support our Himduk. Um, our culture and our heritage as people of the Thanaut, the nation is ingrained and has been ingrained in each of us as a board member and as representatives of the community. We are sure to make sure to uplift and uphold and hold in the highest priority uh, as board members who represent the state so to speak, still have and understand that this is our land and we genuinely make decisions based on the fact that what is good for the community is always at our highest priority above anything else. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Sabala for roll call. All those present, along the way. Yon Haichu. Make sure you turn your mics on, please, Port. Thank you. Other way, Greasworth. Anna Marie Stevens. Thank you. We do have a quorum. We'll continue with this evening's meeting. Letter C is our Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand if you are able and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Letter D this evening is our routine business. Number one is the approval of the March 5th, 2024 board meeting agenda without objection. A motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Sylvia Hendricks. All those in favor of the motion, one on the Mosapo. 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 Number two this evening is the approval of the February 13th, 2024 regular board meeting minutes. Or with your, uh, without objection, I would also ask that we approve the February 21st, 2024 special board meeting minutes as one. Without objection, a motion to, to approve. Namani Second. Second by Ms. Sylvia Hendricks. All those in favor of the motion, Mosapo. 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 Number four this evening is our call to the audience. There were no calls to the audience. For the record, we have no call to the audience. Moving on, letter E is our information items. Number one is the Bobber Curie Unified School District Students of the Month. Mr. Diaz. School Karanek, Anyana Jugger Buen Diaz, President Modia, members of the board, members of the community. It's a pleasure having you guys here. Thank you for being, especially for this segment, we want to celebrate the Students of the Month. Um, and at this point, I'm also going to ask uh, Ms. Pablo in representation of Ms. Enriquez to come and join us. She's going to be reading the students that were nominated for the student of the month and issue their um, prices as well. Okay. Good evening, President Bandia, governing board members, and Mr. Diaz. For our first student of the month, we have pre-K student from Miss Vega's class, Gabriella Mello. If you want to come up and join. Uh, Miss Vega says, it has been a pleasure having Gabriella in the classroom. Gabriella has a very kind heart. She plays with all of her classmates. If there is a student that is having trouble, Making a puzzle, she will help them. If a student comes in sad, she will go and ask them why they are sad and will ask them if they want to draw or play with her. 
Gabby, I'm so proud of you, and I am so happy to have been your teacher. When she was asked what she wants to be when she grows up, when Gabriella grows up, she wants to be a chef so she can make cakes. Um, yeah. <laughs> we are going to do our first grade student, Terrence Antone, from Miss Spotted Wolf's class. I haven't seen him. Okay, Terrence is an absolute joy to have in my class. He is always so kind to me and the other students. If a student needs help, he is one of the first ones offering to lend a helping hand. During partner time, if Terrence, if Terrence notices a student doesn't have a partner, he will ask that student to be part of his group. I can always count on Terrence to give a big smile and a warm hug throughout the day or offer a student a few words of encouragement. I have enjoyed and have been impressed watching Terrence blossom throughout the year in his reading and math skills. I look forward to watching Terrence grow as an Indian Oasis primary student. Great job, Terrence. When he was asked what he wants to be, oh, there he is. Come up here, Terrence. The family can show. When Terrence was at, um, asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? Terrence wants to be a firefighter. He says he wants to be a firefighter because he wants to save people from danger and fight the fires so things don't burn down. Our second grade student is Colton Lopez from Miss Granado's class. Colton is truly a remarkable student who brings a sense of joy and positivity to the classroom environment. His hard-working nature and diligence are evident in his dedication to his studies and his ability to grasp concepts quickly. Colton's positive attitude and willingness to participate make him a valuable asset to the class as he not only excels academically, but also contributes to a collaborative and engaging learning atmosphere. His passion for learning shines through in everything he does, and his enthusiasm is infectious to those around him. Colton's presence undoubtedly enriches the educational experience for everyone involved, and his pos positive impact is truly commendable. When Colton grows up, he wants to work in the hospital because he wants to be able to help sick people and those who are in need of medical help. Our third grade student is Bo Joaquin from Ms. Tamball's class. Oh. 
Bo is a focused student and a great friend. Bo started wearing his glasses this year. Bo has moved more than five levels in SFA this year because of all his hard work and practice. Bo is also a respectful, honest, and kind friend. Also, Bo is helpful in the classroom when anything needs to be done. Thank you, Bo. Bo wants to be a police officer when he grows up so he can help people. Mr. Carlos from our specials classes nominated Tyrus Lopez. <laughs> Tyrus is an excellent student. In PE, he displays great effort and willingness to challenge himself and others. It never takes him long to accomplish new tasks but more importantly, he is always helping his classmates accomplish new things as well. He always makes sure his peers understand the rules of new games, and he always is always checking in on classmates who may be struggling. Our kinder student is on their way. So we have a kindergarten student, and she's on her way, so we will wait and then do hers later. So up next, we have Miss Begay Lewis from the Intermediate Campus. Good evening, um, President Wendy, board members, and Superintendent Diaz. I have the teachers here who will be presenting the awards. Mr. Flores, fourth grade teacher from Baba Kivari Intermediate School. It is my pride and honor to present to you our fourth grade student of the month, ladies and gentlemen, Bailey Ramirez. <laughs> Bailey has been nominated as the fourth grade student of the month for February due to his consistent dedication to academic excellence, exemplary behavior, and wavering positive, positivity, positivity in the classroom. Bailey consistently demonstrates a strong work ethic actively participate in class discussion, and eagerly assess his peers. His enthusiasm for learning is contagious, inspiring those around him to strive for their best. Beyond academics, Bailey exhibits kindness, respect, and empathy towards his classmates, creating a supportive and inclusive classroom environment. His exceptional qualities make him a shining example of a model student deserving of this recognition. When he was asked how can he make the world a better place, he says, I could make the world a better place by taking events even simple steps to ensure that our water resources are not polluted. I will be mindful of how I threw my waste whenever I go to places with bodies of water, even the washes, and I will participate in community cleanup efforts. By protecting our waters, we will have clean seas and oceans where future kids and people can enjoy drinking and swimming. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our pride, Billy Ramirez. Skugtash, everybody, Aniab Chugik, uh, Miss Bulata from fifth grade. It is my pride to present to you all our fifth grade student of the month, Selena Francisco. <laughs> Selena is a diligent student. She keeps herself organized. She participates in class, both answering questions and providing great comments and feedback. She is also someone that I can depend on in assisting her classmates. She is a responsible student who does the right thing and provides a shining example to her peers in both behavior and academics. She puts her best effort into her work and encourages her classmates to be their best selves. 
And when asked on how she can make the world a better place, she said, and I quote, how I would make the world a better place if I could is I would try and solve world hunger because that is one of the biggest problems in the world right now. Ladies and gentlemen, one, once again, Ms. Selena Francisco. Um, grandparents, if you may come in front as well. Thank you. To the Hello, Mike Test. To the Governing Board, President Vendia, Superintendent Diaz, Principals, Friends, the School Clinic, Ayn Yap Chugik, Mark, Justin, and Marcus, and Yakiyap Iya, Komshu Kawawasit, Komshu Kawawasit Chokshan, Kutch, Gumu Amjad, Kapastar Lak, Philippines. For the month of February, our class centered attention on the character trait of kindness. In observing of my student of the month interaction with both classmates and teachers, it is evident that he consistently embodies this virtue. He not only demonstrates a genuine and considerate attitude towards his peers, but also exhibits a commendable sense of responsibility and eagerness to engage in learning process. I asked him, how can you make the world a better place? And I quote, we must cease littering in uh, littering bodies of water, aid endangered animals, contribute to environmental preservations, work towards preventing wars, address world hunger in Africa, and promote a smoke-free environment. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome the sixth grade student of the month, Michael Miguel from the House of Isibindi. Enough to give Miss Hannah Tubalia. I am going to present in behalf of Miss April Wolsey, our li librarian in the intermediate campus. Um, the student of the month is Melina Johnson. <laughs> Melina is an exemplary student and a natural leader on campus. She is very inquisitive in every subject and strives to excel. Whenever she is finished with her work, she asks what she can do next. In library class, Melina is always an active participant in the lessons and is very eager to check books out to read. She displays perseverance, patience, and kindness towards her teachers and her peers. Melina is a joy to have in class and lights up the room with, with her smile, with her sweet smile. <laughs> And when asked, how can you make the world a better place? She said, a way I would make the world a better place is to help all the people that are in need of help in any way. That is me. Thank you. <laughs> and Miss, Miss Leva from high school.
Good evening. Good evening, Governing Board President Buendia, Governing Board members, Mr. Diaz and community. I am here to present the February 2024 Students of the Month, starting with seventh grade. I did not see her here. Is this on? Can you hear Tony? The seventh grade team named Dejalia Carlos is a February Student of the Month. Dejalia is the daughter of Darlene Jackson and Damian Carlos Sr. Her home village is Crohang in Shuktoak, and she is a proud member of the House of Dreamers. Her favorite class is ELA with Miss Tan because the work is easy to understand. Her favorite teacher is Miss Clovia Martin because she is a fun teacher. Deja Lee is a, mus is a musician playing the piano. After graduating from the secondary campus, she plans on attending college at the <laughs> University of Arizona, bear down. Her current career goal is to become a world-renowned baker. Two people that Dejalia greatly admires are her mom and her auntie, Linda. Dejalia would like to thank them for supporting her and pushing her to be her best. Keep up the good work, Dejalia. Next, the eighth grade team would like to recognize Robert Garcia. Robert Garcia is the student of the month for February, and he is the son of Pauline Nas. I don't want to mess up. Nasai. Nasiwaitua. Nasiwaitua. Her home village is um, Garcia Strip in the Shuktok district. He is a proud member of Isabindi. His favorite class is science with Miss Erin Martin because labs are interesting and fun. His favorite teacher is Mr. Jones because he is nice and kind. Robert is a basketball fan. After graduating from Babo Kivari Secondary, he plans on going to college, hopefully at UCLA. His current career goal is to become a mechanical engineer. The people that Robert would most like to thank are his brothers, his sisters, and his parents. He would like to thank them for all their constant support and love over the years. Good luck, Ro good work, Robert. Keep pushing to learn and grow as a student. We can't wait to see what you accomplish. <laughs> Yay, Robert. One more. Ninth grade would like to um, recognize Angelique Garcia. Angelique is the ninth grade student of the month for February. She is also the daughter of Pauline Nayestewa. Her home village is also um, Garcia Strip in Shuktoak, and she is a member of the House of Dreamers. Angelique's favorite class is photography with Miss Lopez because it's interesting and Angelique likes taking pictures. Her favorite teacher is Mr. Acuna because he is cool, funny, and a great teacher. After graduating from Babo Kivari Secondary, Angelique plans on going to college at the U of A. Her mm -hmm. current career goal is to become a culinary star baker. She would like to especially thank two people tonight, her grandma and her uncle. She would like to thank them for all the support and encouragement they have provided her throughout her life. Congratulations, Angelique. We are so proud of you. <clears throat> Next, 10th grade would like to recognize Eagle Bear Toro. Eagle Bear is the 10th grade student of the month. He is the son of Leah Antone. His home village is Topawa in Babo Kivari district, and he is a proud member of the House of Isabindi. Eagle Bear is an athlete playing basketball this weekend in the Special Olympics. His favorite class is World History with Ms. Kabura Tan because it is very interesting to know about history. His favorite teacher is Mr. Meese because he is cool and funny. Eagle Bear is a big basketball fan and his favorite college team is the U of A Wildcats. After graduating from the Babo Kivari Secondary, he plans on entering the workforce. His current career goals are open and he is exploring what is out there in the world. 
If he had a super secret power, it would be super strength. So he could be super helpful. You're doing a great job, Eagle Bear. Congratulations. Eleventh grade would like to recognize Jaden Donahue. Jaden is the son of Raynell Bernard and Alan Donahue. His home village is Silnakia in Shukdok district. He is also a member of Amistad. He is a hardworking student with excellent attendance who is always eager to learn. He is a junior class representative in student council and a member of BSC, Future Farmers of America. Jaden's favorite class is Otto and his favorite teacher is Mr. Nalam. Jaden likes Otto with Mr. Nalam because, he because he's learning to fix things. After graduating from Babo Kivari Secondary, Jaden plans on going to trade school to become an auto mechanic. If he could, Jaden would make the world a better place by making sure that everyone has something to eat and drink every night. If Jaden could have a superpower, it would be to have all the people to have a house. It would be to help all people have a house to live in. Congratulations, Jaden. You're doing a great job. <laughs> One more. And finally, for 12th grade, we would like to recognize Christina Ramon. Christina is the 12th grade student of the month for February. She is the daughter of Leatrice Escalante. Her home village is Santa Rosa in the Guachi district. Christina is a member of the House of River. Her favorite class is agricultural science with Mr. Davila because we are always learning something new. Her favorite teacher is Mr. Colson because he helps her in her classes. Christina is an artist and enjoys painting and listening to music. After graduating from Babo Kivari Secondary, she plans on either going to community college or joining the workforce. Christina is considering many different careers. A few she is thinking about are photography, video editing, or visual arts. One person that Christina greatly admires is her mom. She would like to thank her for always showing support and love and for being a great example. We are so proud of you, Christina. Congratulations. And last but not least, Mr. Fox. Good evening, everyone. My, my guy's not here today. Um, I'd like to take a second just to talk about a young man, 11th grader, named uh, Darius Dickens. Uh, it's, I'm a little surprised he's not here tonight. Uh, he did let me know. Um, he's had 100% attendance since beginning of this semester. Um, so he did have 100% attendance uh, up until today. Uh, he did text me and say, I apologize for not being here and told him I didn't have to give him the payola. I said, don't worry about it. Uh, we have a little thing that we do at Alternative. Um, and I told him, if you're not here, you don't get that special prize. And I didn't realize he had something pretty important to do today. So Darius Dickens completed 255 activities last month. He finished off four classes, which is two credits. Um, that's up to three and a half since mid-November. So he's really moving. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. And again, what I'm very proud of is 100% attendance. Um, Darius is a very, very um, level-headed young man. When you ask him, like, Darius, what are you going to do after school? Um, he pretty much says, future will take care of itself if I handle the present, and I'm not even going to worry about the past. So he lives in the day. I appreciate him greatly for doing so. And Darius, I will see you tomorrow. Thank you, guys. So it is, um, of course, with honor on behalf of the governing board to say thank you so much. You are a complete inspiration to all of us, our students and to our parents, our community members and to our staff members who nominate and recognize the successes and the achievements of our students. It's always, always such a blessing. So thank you so much. We'll continue our meeting. You're welcome to stay, but that'll conclude our students of the month for this, uh, for this month. Thank you.
Brian, Daniel, or Brian? Can we can we can we mute? I only hear certain. I know. I only hear certain going to come. Yeah, I've got because I forgot all about it. No, I'm going to take it in. Good. Yeah. Her name is Pablo from the primary. Mm -hmm. We learned something new about her. Her dad, her dad is uh, Clifford Pablo. Oh. Oh. Clifford Pablo, the one that works for the college for the ag program. Oh, oh That's really? Her dad, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I've heard the name, but I don't know. I've never, maybe I have. But I oh, yeah. <coughs> Mom is the Anglo. Uh -huh. Her dad is Clifford, yeah, because they gave him an award at oh. this one thing last week. Yeah, they went him, they recognized him, Amy, and Celso. Wow. And then somebody else from Apache, I think. But she was there with him, and then I never knew that was her dad. <laughs> we know his sister, he has a sister, um, and um, Priscilla, her name is Priscilla. Vernon knows her really well because he used to spend a lot of time with her in San Diego when he was up there because she lived up in San Diego. Then when she retired, she moved back to Arizona. <laughs> She's a funny lady, though. Okay. Uh, are we ready? Mr. Hmm? Okay, good. All right. We'll go ahead and continue with our meeting this evening. Number two, um, I don't see anything on it, so if there was nothing, we could have removed it. Yep. But nonetheless, um, for the record, we do not have any um, award for the Himduck Award this month. So we're going to double up next month. <laughs> All right. Uh, so for the record, there is no information item board for um, number two this evening. Number three is our Civil Air Patrol, pre Civil Air Patrol presentation. Please, sir. And it's Second Lieutenant Gabriel Cutler, right? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. So just to make sure to announce you. So welcome, and you may begin. Thank you, sir. I want to first and start. And Ms. Wynonna Larson. <laughs> and, and Ms. Larson. And Ms. Larson. Uh, we first want to uh, thank you, President Buendia and Superintendent Diaz and Ford, for allowing us the opportunity to speak this evening. So the very first thing I want to do is explain a little bit what Civil Air Patrol is. Civil Air Patrol was founded one week prior to Pearl Harbor. It was founded to, as a civilian air force for the United States uh, of America, as well as became the United States Air Force Auxiliary. Uh, is the PowerPoint presentation available, or just the printable? Oh. Okay, if you will give me just a moment of grace, I have my laptop with me with the presentation on. Does anybody have access to that? We can, so he doesn't have to. Right do. now. Okay. You should have access, Daniel. Refresh. 
Yay. There we go. <laughs> Members of the audience that asked us to turn all the microphones during the presentation to prevent. Uh... Next. It is a congressionally chartered nonprofit all of the time. So, all of the time that Civil Air Patrol operates, it is congressionally chartered as a 501c3. There are three main missions within Civil Air Patrol those are cadet programs, emergency services, and aerospace education. During the time of serving under the Air Force, uh, we are a member of First Air Force, which falls under the Total Force Partners, which includes the Air Force National Guard, Air Force Reserves, the Air Force Active Duty, and Air Force Auxiliary. During our auxiliary missions, we fall under the United States Air Force Auxiliary. We were found December 1st of 1941, uh, after the United States was thrust into World War II, we became a part of the civilian defense. We patrolled the Atlantic coast from Maine to Mexico and monitored and harassed German U-boats in shipping lanes, searching for survivors of ships that succumbed to the torpedo attacks or weather and training military pilots. Next slide, please. Congress passed a public law 79 TAC 476, stipulating that Civil Air Patrol, post-World War II, will never again serve in a combat role. Our missions now are purely that of service. We are designed and are accustomed to serving individuals through search and rescue, through emergency services, and through cadet programs. Next slide, please. We are a volunteer-driven force of 56,000 members. As of 2022, the numbers have increased uh, to about 58,000. We currently have 23,000 youth. We operate the world's largest fleet of single-engined aircraft, including 555 aircraft, 47 gliders, and two balloons, operating more than 2,200 drones. We offer high-tech aerial imaging that includes LIDAR, flare, forward-looking infrared, high-definition video, 3D scanning for damage assessment, search and rescue, as well as many other emergency services operations. Next slide, please. Our core competencies in youth programs include leadership training, character development, aviation initiatives, physical fitness, career exploration, special activities. Aerospace education includes a K through 12 fully funded, fully designed curriculum by the United States Air Force and Civil Air Patrol. STEM kits are provided to all squadrons at no cost. Classroom support, career expo exploration, and then for emergency services, we are able to certify and license for search and rescue, flight training. We participate in joint military training, aerial imaging, drone support, and transport. It is aligned to national academic standards. Aerospace education offers more than 40 educational products consisting of hundreds of lessons, plans that span from pre-K all the way through grade 12. Subjects include mathematics, weather, robotics, model rocketry, flight, space science, unmanned aerial systems, and more. Next slide, please. The youth programs. The youth programs has a robust physical fitness program designed to ensure that our youth of today are up to the presidential physical fitness standards, as well as providing them the knowledge and the background to maintain that. We also offer a robust leadership program. This leadership program is some of the best in the world, provided by the United States Air Force, uh, educationally backed, and is funded. Civil Air Patrol performs 90% of all search and rescue missions in the United States. 
We have advanced search capabilities. Cadets are allowed to participate once trained in search and rescue. And that is a program that we are excited to offer to the nation. The emergency service teams uh, also respond to local, state, and federal agencies for natural disasters. Uh, Hurricane Katrina, Civil Air Patrol was there performing missions. As a total force partner of the Air Force, the auxiliary plays an integral role in joint readiness training for the military. This includes Operation Noble Eagle, Operation Bird Dog, Green Flag, SRPA, RPP, JSTARS, and many others. Now there is one thing with the, uh, if you don't mind going back just one slide, there is one thing with uh, the military missions. Military missions are set to adult members for most of the missions, and that is because they are operating directly with the United States Air Force. Uh, this program is not just open to cadets. Uh, for the school class setting, it would be set for 9 through 12, but anyone in the community, once they pass the background uh, check and the FBI clearance card, can be a part of this. There is a 3 to 1 uh, return on investment for every dollar spent in service of others. Every year, Civil Air Patrol is credited with over 100 lives saved. We have in our capacity over 555 aircraft, 1,000 vehicles, 1,400 locations. We have flown over 100,000 miles within the past year, or hours flown. 500,000 students have been impacted across the nation and over $200 million in excess of volunteer time. Civil Air Patrol never requires, and this is the most important thing on this slide, is Civil Air Patrol never requires a military obligation. This training, though military in design and structure, is not designed to build the military. It is not designed to push anyone into the military that does not want to be there. The design of this program is to offer leadership capabilities and career exploration. Besides just the military, Civil Air Patrol offers the experiences of exploring law enforcement, of exploring search and rescue, of EMS, of first responder, of, in many different fields, including STEM, GIS, uh, and, excuse me, sorry. GIS, as well as communication, aerospace, engineering, robotics, technology. There are many different avenues that cadets could take. How this would benefit the community. Cadets can provide color guard and presentation teams and community for community events and ceremonies. They can aid and set up and take down during community and district days, service projects and community service, CAP will provide a positive environment to create leaders for the community, career opportunities and exploration, and increase visibility of community youth learning leadership and benefiting the community. Civil Air Patrol offers orientation flights for all uh, cadets in the program. It also offers flight training scholarships. I've had many a cadet who have graduated this program with a pilot's license with no money paid out of their pocket before they've had their driver's license sometime. Provides activities and competitions for cadets at the local, state, regional, and national levels. Cadets at the national level will actually attend at Maxwell Air Force Base national events to compete. Makes opportunities for communi community involvement available through Color Guard drill teams and emergency services missions. So besides just providing the formal uh, involvement. It will also involve the emergency services aspect. Besides, one of the plans that I have is working with Mesa Falcon Field Composite Squadron is to actually have them fly down with the Air Force aircraft down to Ryan Airfield to provide search and rescue training for all of the cadets. It challenges youth to be ambassadors for a drug-free lifestyle. It exposes thousands of cadets to cyber defense careers through Cyber Patriot, the Air Force and Space Force Association's National Youth Cyber Security Competition. 
Civil Air Patrol accounts for 10% of the cadets who make up each of the U.S. Air Force Academy's classes. In addition to that, once a cadet reaches second lieutenant, which is the award of General Billy Mitchell, they are allowed to enlist in the Air Force, the U.S. Army, and the Coast Guard at a higher pay grade, usually E2 or E3, which equates to quite a bit of an increase in pay. They can participate in international air cadet exchange programs with countries like Australia and the UK. Award, uh, they can be awarded different college scholarships in several disciplines, including STEM. Each cadet will be required to perform 20 hours of service to the community and or school a year. To enable the cadet squadron to flourish on campus, CAP will provide the following, which includes a comprehensive curriculum of thematic areas, including leadership, fitness, aerospace, and character. Program rules governing cadet progression, program content, award criteria, and similar matters via CAP regulations. So Civil Air Patrol will provide a proven structure for the entire program. Adult professional training and development. So besides just providing the cadets training, it will provide anyone that wants to participate in the program the training to properly interact with cadets and relay this information per the standards. It will also provide, the wing has agreed to provide a mentor coaching for the squadron's first two years at a minimum to ensure the, the uh, stability and longevity of the squadron. In addition to that, the Curry Blues Voucher, which is a program that offers uh, a financial needs-based assistance to uniform. Now, the way that this squadron I would like to be designed is that all uniforms will be provided to the cadets at no cost to them, as long as those uniforms, once they leave the program, get returned in a serviceable condition to ensure that any financial problems do not keep a cadet from joining. It will also provide a new cadet kit, STEM kits, at least two to start with, web-based system for tracking cadet progress, uh, as well as access to summer camp, weekend programming, career exploration academies, which include there's the National Emergency Services Academy that uh, will provide the most robust emergency services training that I have ever been a part of. Also, access to need-based tuition for summer programs, including the encampments, which are required to uh, make the rank of second lieutenant. It'll screen and train CAP adults to, who come in contact with students. So it'll ensure that the safety of the students are the top pr priority. To enable the cadets and the squadron to flourish on campus, the school will provide the following. So these are what the rules and regulations of Civil Air Patrol have dictated to actually have the program. A classroom and activity space at no cost. At least one faculty, staff member, or squadron leadership team, which both I and Ms. Larson have agreed and would love to participate in this program. Stipends, if any. I'm not requesting any stipend, and I can't speak on behalf of Ms. Larson, but for me, this is actually just solely to provide something for the students that I think would truly be beneficial to them. Opportunity for squadron to recruit new students and cadets, and opportunity for the squadron to contribute to the student life on campus, including color guards and honor guard. To enable the cadets and their squadron to flourish on campus, the school or cadets family will provide the following. An annual membership fee of $38, which gets paid to the wing, and unfortunately that is set by the wing and higher command, and I cannot waive that. But there are opportunities for financial assistance for that as well. And $35 for squadron mem membership fees. One of the things that I want to ensure that we provide for these cadets and these students is sustainability and that we can operate uh, without additional financial funds from the school district to make it as easy as a transition as possible. We plan on providing the uniforms, the rank insignia, the achievement ribbons and awards, tuition for summer programs, special weekend activities, and plan to uh, actively fundraise throughout the school year to provide these. 
It is also requested that school provide paid time for faculty or staff members only for professional development of staff to include conference attendance for required promotion of leadership team, training for leadership team provided by Civil Air Patrol in the United States Air Force, which primarily includes the uh, initial fee and then the transportation, an opportunity for staff to progress through the training set forth by Civil Air Patrol and the required commander's call. So there are certain instances where the wing commander may call all uh, officers in the program to attend a commander's call. Before a request for school staff to attend the training is brought to the school district for approval of paid time, the following will be required of the squadron. Squadron or commander approval, squadron financial officer approval, and squadron resources review and approval. So with that, the wing has agreed to provide a certified financial officer for the squadron as well. Failure to receive the following approvals will result in the denial of the request or will be required to request leave with or without pay and be the member's financial responsibility. The squadron as a whole would like to take on the responsibility of the costs associated. The only thing that we would request is that that staff member be uh, provided the paid time off for professional development. A lot of this information, I, I respect your guys' time. I understand that I have a very limited amount of it, and that's why I did provide the uh, information for you, and I want to make sure that I have time to answer all of your questions. So the main information on this page is CAP Regulation 60 TAC 3. That's the Cadets at School program, and that is the main governing document for cadets at school and school-based squadrons. The elective class during the school day uh, with after-school opportunities. After speaking with the wing command and higher command, we have decided that based on the student availability as well as geographical distances and other extenuating circumstances that a school, in-school based class would be the most advantageous for the cadet program, as well as offer it the best chance to succeed and provide the program. Once a week, the cadets would be required to wear a service uniform or uniform of the day, which may include a field uniform. So the service uniform looks like this one. Uh, the field uniform would be a camouflage uniform with Civil Air Patrol insignia on it. And cadets would be uh, as directed by staff. Every Monday, uh, it's proposed that that will be the physical fitness day. And they will be prescribed and provided a physical fitness uniform to wear, including shoes, socks, everything required. The school may require cadets to maintain certain standards of academic performance to remain active in CAP. The big major takeaway from this is at no time can we ever force a student to be in Civil Air Patrol should they not want to. So if nothing else fits in their schedule and they do not want to be in the Civil Air Patrol program, we cannot just place them in the Civil Air Patrol program where they do not want to be. We want to make sure that the cadets are not only excited about the program, but want to be there and want to learn these skills. Next slide, please. As I stated, the squadron would like to provide all uniforms, including uh, undergarments, as well as footwear, socks, everything as applicable. Um, and then the main uniform items, so the jacket, the service insignia, the shoes, or the uh, shirt, and trousers would still remain property of the squadron so that we could reissue it to cadets once they graduate and new cadets come in to ensure the sustainability as well as providing as low a cost as possible for this program. Saturday activities are going to be required, and that's required by Civil Air Patrol, and that can include um, Field trips such as I've taken cadets to the Maritime Museum in San Diego to stay overnight on the Midway, the USS Midway. I've also taken cadets to the Pima Air and Space Museum, 
and I've also taken cadets to search and rescue missions or search and rescue exercises throughout the state with other squadrons to meet other cadets like themselves. Permission slips for activities will be required. Civil Air Patrol has the specific forms that are required to be filled out and presented to them. Squadron summer activities include squadron leadership team um, training as well as input from the cadet staff and cadets on what they would like to do during the summer. Cadets or, and or the squadron may decide to participate in group, wing, or national activities, though there will be a cost that we will hope, hopefully be able to fundraise for, to pay for it. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Civil Air Patrol can and will provide a vehicle for certain usage that will be paid for by Civil Air Patrol. We would have to requisition that from the davis Monfin Squadron, but assuming that they don't have something pre-planned, that transportation is provided for us. Next slide, please. The squadron, funding the program. The squadron will operate independently from the school district in terms of finances and operation. That is set by Civil Air Patrol, Civil Air Patrol wing, uh, so the higher command actually holds the account and grants, we plan on fundraising as well as seeking opportunities for grants, which include things like uh, just recently uh, Lockheed Martin had a grant for uh, I think $40,000. The school would also be able to apply for the 21st century grant. This program does qualify for that. Next slide, please. Expected startup finances are $40,000 for 12 cadets. That includes all uniforms, including classroom sets of textbooks, insignia, programs, awards, furniture, appropriate storage, honor guard, and color guard equipment. And the expected overhead cost yearly will be about $8,000. The Curry voucher, I will allow you guys to look at that yourself. I know I am running out of time, and I do not want to waste it. Next, please. Next, please. Insurance. Civil Air Patrol maintains liability insurance policies for all general liability insurance, vehicle liability insurance, and aviation liability insurance, including for cadets and senior members. So the insurance is solely on the responsibility of Civil Air Patrol and the United States government and the United States. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. The syllabi. Uh, which I have included in there for your uh, ease. So next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, if you want, you can go ahead to the uh, quick video, and then I will take questions.
work. Questions? Before I go, <laughs> first of all, thank you so much for the presentation, um, Ms. Larson, Second Lieutenant Cutler. Um, the only questions I have are more so on our on our end, just to the school, to the superintendent. Um, I know that right now, as far as fitting the, the, the program were to be introduced into the elective programming that we have, the current block schedule that we have, is that something that's going to be necessary for us to need to adjust in any way, or are you guys pretty much ready to just slide in wherever you guys are going to be able to go? Wherever we need to be. Okay. That was one question. The other one I just saw um, was kind of answered, you know, where else and how else. Um, and I didn't see the video. I guess I should have looked thoroughly through the um, presentation um, about the success stories or any kind of things that we could actually look at. And I think seeing that definitely gave me, me answered all those questions. Um, the other, the last question I have in particular was for the funding. Um, I know you said that we actively seek funding, so we shouldn't have to, but is there any necessity for us to just probably prepare just in case that doesn't happen? Or is there ever a moment where you don't get the funding and we do have to get those costs covered? It is possible that we don't receive the grants. Uh, I know right now, unfortunately, most of the grant season for next year is over. There are a couple of grants, specifically the Lockheed Martin one. Right. So it may be difficult to start the initial funding. And if that's the case, the option that we have is to actually become a flight out of Falcon Field, uh, Mesa, Arizona, mm -hmm. uh, which is the current, current squadron I'm a part of until we are able to get that funding to stand up on our own. Okay. Uh, I know that 305, the squadron 305 at Mesa has already guaranteed uh, a stockpile of ABU uniforms for all of the cadets as well. Ms. Sylvia? That was going to be my question is what other schools within Arizona do you, are you, are you uh, sponsoring right now? So currently I am not sponsoring any of them. Civil Air Patrol as a whole usually operates as a after school activity mm -hmm. on a volunteer basis. This is a newer program that they are implementing for areas that it's difficult to get uh, programs like JRTC in. Uh, so this opportunity is something that the director of cadet programs up at the wing has implemented at two or three schools and it has been relatively successful uh, for short periods of time because they lack the longevity of the teachers. And I think where this will differ is that I have been a part of this program for 14 years and I love teaching here at Bobby Cubery High School and I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Are you a teacher too? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so what schools are those? Excuse me. Um, so one of the other things that um, we have, there's high schools across the country mm -hmm. that, are, um, that have CAP in their curriculum. Um, our high school that we went to in New Mexico, um, we, the, we had a CAP, and my sister was actually a part of that program. At that time, I didn't even know what it was. I just thought it was cool, their uniform. <laughs> but um, yeah, they did a lot of community service, and they were out with and it was just, it was unbelievable. And then to see that transformation from, you know, just a young young girl, young man, or young boy, and then having them grow into that. So I just wanted to share that part. And then the, um, what was the other thing that you had asked about? What schools in Arizona? Is oh, yes. schools that are participating? Oh, I know. Um, so the, he had mentioned JROTC. Um, one of the reasons why our school district doesn't have one or has never had one that I know of mm -hmm. is that we don't have any retired military either in the Marine Corps or in the Army. Mm -hmm. um, and if we do, they're not um, so much interested in teaching mm -hmm. uh, because they know that the way that we're trained is specific and, you know, they don't want to have that and, and that's different because then they don't have any support. They're like, the school district has to fund them. I just wanted to make that. Um, go ahead, what other schools? 
As far as the rest of the schools, I don't personally have those names. The oh, cadet okay. programs uh, director does, and I can get those for you, ma'am. All right. I just thought maybe just looking at their program, if they have a website, you know, just to learn a little bit more about them or something. If you would like to learn more about the uh, cadet life, I know that I served as the uh, deputy commander of cadets at the Falcon Field Squadron, mm -hmm. and I, I would be more than happy to have some of the cadets. One of them who is actually currently, I, he, he started with me as a uh, eighth grader, and now he is graduated and going into the Army as a Green Beret. Mm -hmm. So, and, and he would be more than happy to come down and speak with you as well. I was just a little bit curious about what is a squadron? So a squadron, and I'm sorry, I, I should have explained the uh, design a little bit more. So at the base level, you have an element. An element is usually made up of a junior airman or a junior cadet and three to four other cadets. And then after that, you have a flight. That flight will be made up of four elements and we'll have a flight commander. And then from there, you'll have two or more flights that create a squadron. And then from there, that squadron will become a group, and then from a group to a wing, mm -hmm. and from wing to region, and region to national. Oh, okay. So, and there are a total of 51 wing, or 52 <laughs> now, actually, including Puerto Rico, uh, in Civil Air Patrol. Okay. Kind of like athletics, you have JB, and then you have varsity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The hooky. The hooky. Ms. Vance. <coughs> Hit your mic. I know at one time the police department did have the mm -hmm. um, program for the youth, mm -hmm. and they did something similar to this. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for our youth to discover other parts of, you know, like you had mentioned, the forensics and or the robotics and all of that stuff, because I think that's really important for our kids to know that there's so many options out there for them, and and just um, given that opportunity um, to move forward in those directions, and and you know, it's just helping them grow, yes. helping nurture them in in a positive way, you know, and I I think that um, it is kind of frightening at first um, to see that, um, but I know it's good. I know it would be good. Um, <clears throat> so I, I, you know, I just, it, it, it surprised me to see that. <laughs> but I, I, um, I think that it would help our youth, you know. Um, I think that um, there's a lot of benefits toward it, so. You know, I just, I just think that stuff has to be, I guess, worked out between the school and, and you know, the program and, you know, all, all those sorts of things. But I'm pretty sure that we're going to have enough kids that are going to want to try and want to move in that direction. So um, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. I think and the, unfortunately, I, I was supposed to have some students here that were, were going to speak with you as well that would like to join the cadet program. But they are actually at the baseball game right now. No worries. <laughs> they are playing. I think I'd just finish with, I, 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 am, I think I have and been really impressed and excited about the things that we're finally introducing as far as what the efforts that all you are making in, in bringing it forward and feeling confident and comfortable to. So I will say, uh, at least on my piece on my end as well, that... I get a I get an, a, a deep sense of pride because I know that part of a part of part of what I know of our heritage and who we come from is a long strong line of military personnel, even my grandparents. And of course, I know that there's instances where there there wasn't really a choice at some point. I mean, you know, it was either that or, or anything else. But it didn't mean it didn't it didn't diminish it in any way. It made it even stronger. So I I 100% want to say. If we can move forward, let's let's do so. Um, I know. I think in the instance that I feel the same way um, as Miss um, Vance, but I, I truly want all of our kids, students, anyone that comes to BOSD to feel like they have uh, and are supported in the things they want to be able to do, 
and, and, and be shown options and that we're able to bring something to them that maybe they, I know we haven't, I haven't never seen anything like this. I went to the same school. Hook you. Hey, not that long ago, but, <laughs> but a little while ago. Hey. Um, <clears throat> so that, if we can start the conversation or whatever you need from us once it comes forward, I don't have anything. Mr. Diaz? No, I just uh, I, I share Sandra. the same sentiments, um, and just that I agree that it gives them a positive, more, um, yeah, more positive way to a direction in life, and also keeping them out of trouble. You know, I, I know that that, and I know that they, my late husband, we did rodeos, so that kept my kids, my boys, out of anything else that they wanted to do. So it's just giving that that type of direction. Senor Diaz. Okay. Well, one of the questions was, um, in the event that we have more than 12 students or more than 16 students interested, how would that then, um, the funding, um, what would the funding look like and would it, what, what would it come from? Um, and to answer your question, President Mundia, we do have a memorandum of understanding um, included in the package uh, that we will send to our legal department for review and bring it back to the governing board for review as well and then approval. All right, couple. Great. So with that, with that said, the, what is the timeline, if any, on rolling out, if possible? Just, just a guesstimate. Next school year, Predator. Sir, I do believe that it could uh, take place next. <coughs> year. You talked about some boys coming to to speak on the. On their so there are some interested students yeah, now. Yeah, okay. there is. Uh, so out of the students that are, have been in my classes, I have spoken to quite a few, and there was a probably 10 to 15 interested. Oh, okay. Now, the follow-through will be another story, but I, I do expect that with the incoming eighth grade into um, – freshman year, mm -hmm. as well as the interest that is already at the school to the students that I have access to, mm -hmm. I think we'll have a good turnout of our mm -hmm. cadets. Um, is that everything, board? Thank you so much. Oh, go ahead, Miss Ella. Sorry, I forgot you were there. Go ahead, Ella. Um, you mentioned um, the students must want to be there and are excited to be there, but what if they like maybe halfway through the training and they drop out? What, what do you do with those students? So those students would have an option, and, and, and this is up to the school administrators as well as the school counselor. Uh, th those students would have an option if they no longer want to be in the program and they no longer see a benefit of it. Obviously, we will reach out to them as well as their parents and try to uh, bring them back into the fold. But if at, at some point the student does not want to be there, we don't want to force anyone into this. We understand that the idea of wearing uniform and we understand <coughs> that the idea of engaging in paramilitary activities can be frightening for some people and we don't want to turn anyone off of it. And we sure do not want to feel like anyone is being forced into the program that it is a remedial program for uh, like a military school, uh, that, is, that is not our goal. Our goal is to solely create a positive environment for leadership skills as well as licensure and opportunities for these cadets and students. And if that's not what they want, then we will be sure to work with the school to make sure that they're put in a classroom that they feel comfortable in and is more appropriate to them. Okay, thank you. I think it's a, a good program because we, we do see the ROTC at other schools and they perform very well, especially when some of them perform at the um, uh, conference, conference. So uh, I agree with that Ms. Vance mentioned. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Oi. Thank you for your presentation, and we'll bring it back this month um, what, or after our legal counsel reviews the MOU or then the final approval for our governing board. Thank, thank you, thank you so much for your time. Ms. Larson, Mr. Thank Keller, you. thank you so much.
continuing with, continuing with our agenda this evening, number four is the Barbecue Reunified School District Governing Board Financial Report. Ms. Ravago. Let's give it up for Ms. Christina Bravago, our CFO. Good evening, President Buendia, um, Governing Board members, and Superintendent Diaz. I'm going to go over the um, February student activities and auxiliaries balances. <clears throat> so going in order, the student activities account received deposits totaling $5,980 and disbursements of $6,000. $695.34 in the month of February. The high school student council account had disbursements totaling $2,882.98 for credit card purchases for meals and hotel stay for the AASC leadership conference and Amazon orders for PO 2400482. The class of 24 received a deposit of $1,194 from concession sales at the Warrior basketball game on February 7th and had a disbursement of $745.99 from Amazon orders for PO 2400593. The high school FFA received a $200 donation from Arid State Land and AG Associated LLC. The high school boys basketball team received a deposit of $2,379 from concession sales at the Warrior basketball game on February 10th and a disbursement of $1,135 for a payment on invoice for PO 2400625. The high school girls basketball um, account had disbursements totaling $1,931.30 for credit card purchases of meals for players at away games and invoice for PO 2400592. The eighth grade promo account um, had a receipts totaling $1,642 from concession sales at middle school basketball games on January 30th, January 31st, and February 22nd. Finally, the high school spirit line received a deposit of $565 from the high school Valentine gram sales. The ending balance for a student activity account on 229.24 was $113,889.30. The student auxiliary fund received deposits totaling down. That's a little bit further down. Sorry, Daniel. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, the auxiliary fund received deposits totaling $477 in February to um, middle school auxiliary for all-star basketball admissions on February 22nd. The high school had disbursements of $990.68 to pay for fuel for athletic travel and hotel stay for the BUSD bus driver. And the intermediate auxiliary had a disbursement of $3,003.13 to scholastic book fairs. The ending balance on February 29th, 2024 for auxiliary was $10,592.13. Do I have any questions on the student activities and auxiliary accounts? Is that typical? to pay for driver transportation? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because, because what? They're, requ they're requesting the driver so it comes out of, of the, or they, they approve it in the minutes to come out of the, to pay for that. Okay. Yeah. And then did you mention what the IOIS, intermediate, is that intermediate school? What that 3,000? The intermediate um, payment for Scholastic Book Fair. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Sorry. That's okay. Anything else? Okay. Mr. Diaz. Uh, President Maria, um, I just would like to um, ask Ms. Leva um, and the spa sponsor uh, for Class of 2024 to give us an update 
uh, regarding on their field trip and assurances that they had the funding to be able to complete um, their trip and complete their responsibilities to be successful in their trip and also how many students were eligible. Ms. Leva, no, not right now, not like for April. If um, in, based on the, uh, the amount of money that I see for class of 2024, um, if they can give us that update. Um, it can be an informational item that we can put it so for everyone's review. I just want to make sure that they have reached their financial goal and they, they will be able to uh, um, come through with all of their um, financial responsibilities uh, with everything that they are um, setting for their trip. I'll have them update their last Okay. Thank you, Ms. Leva. Was that presentation shared with us? The presentation was. Uh -huh. Okay. I think it was two board meetings ago. I think it was the December yeah. board meeting. Uh -huh. Okay. I think um, the deposits have already hit um, that they put down, so it's just the remainder of whatever's left, <laughs> and, and we haven't received a, a true student count yet. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next you can, um, it'll be, if you go back, Daniel, to the, it'll be the last, there you go. Okay, so, and it, you can just stay on that one, that's the main one. Um, so now we're, I'm going to go over the um, budget expenditures for February. Um, attached we have here the um, fiscal year 24 expenditures through the end of February. Um, MNO reflects a budget balance of $4,435,979.45. Um, we are eight months into the fiscal year and everything is looking steady. Um, we will reallocate teacher housing funds to um, impact aid um, for the encumbrance is making it go negative. So that is when we're gonna review the requisitions that are, are submitted for teacher housing costs and we reallocate to impact aid when we don't have enough to cover in teacher housing. Um, and that is, is normal for each year. Um, and the grants department is currently requesting reimbursements and allocating funds between the grants um, negative balances. So we have um, we're looking at JTED and uh, First Things First. Um, so we have those already taken care of. Since we were time crunched at the end of the month, we didn't give us much time with the weekend falling in between um, to cover that before getting um, to the um, board reports, but we are working on that currently. Um, overall, we currently have a 57.44% or $17,219,067.07 budget balance, excluding encumbrances. We received $23,690,080.42 so far in fiscal year 24 in revenues from all funds, excluding funds for student activities and insurance fund. Do I have any questions for the um, expenditures for February? Yeah, I was just. Okay, Ms. Hendricks. So I was just. Um, oh, I was just wondering why um, the impact date was still in the negative. Then it joined with JTED, and first things first is still in the negative. So we just have for first things first and JTEDs, we just have to um, request reimbursements, and also for impact aid. We're gonna have to either move monies around or it's just, it's a budget balance. So it's not the true balance of impact aid. It's just that expenditures and what we have encumbered has gone over what we budgeted for the year. Mm -hmm. So when will we see a true balance? Uh, well, during the, for the budget we don't, it's not an exact balance. It's what we budget out to the sites mm -hmm. and the school district. And so part of keeping a reserve, we don't allocate the whole balance of impact aid out to the sites. We give them a budget balance. So um, we will be reviewing requisitions um, because we're going to be closing soon the encumbrance period. We're gonna 
start that off early at the end of April, April 30th, we're gonna close it off. So we're starting to review and look to see if there are POs in place that have not been used yet or will not be used, we'll be closing that, which will free up encumbrances in impact aid and which will cause that number to go down and it won't be negative. So right now we just have what we are expecting to spend, but it doesn't necessarily mean we're spending all of that money. So once we unencumber a lot of that, it's going to free that up, which will take us back under the budget balance, if that makes sense. It's just a little scary that because I've never seen impact aid in the negative mm -hmm. in it, my years. Yeah. yeah. It, and then um, I know that, that the floor, I guess, came out of that. Gym uh, floor. That, uh, and then we have floor. extra transportation expenses that we didn't expect to incur um, that we've we've put money in towards. So it's money that's going to, to needs that we needed for the school district. Um, that we weren't expecting to spend when we did start off with the budget. So that has gone a little bit over too. But um, I think once we go and we start releasing money from um, requisitions, when we start closing them down, um, it, it should be more of what we expected to have spent. Is that meaning that we're behind on that or? No, no, okay. no, no, no. We're actually starting off a little bit earlier than we usually do um, because we want to be um, in a good spot to be able to wrap things up, give accounts payable, enough time to pay that, any last minute things. Um, as you remember last year, um, we extended the deadline for purchases mm -hmm. and that caused a lot of delay in the work with um, in finance. So we're trying to be ahead of that curve this time and start off closing the POs a little bit earlier, which will give people more time. So we do notify at the cabinet meetings. We let the principals know it's coming up soon, the deadline. We'll be sending out emails um, um, quite frequently with the deadlines and reminders so that the sites can get in any purchases that they need for the remainder of the year. Um, so I know we have had a lot of sites turning in um, a lot of requisitions to to get what they need to be okay for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we're trying to do that and be a little bit ahead of that that part of it. And then with the uh, floor and what we're looking at trying to get back or what? In then that would go back in. Yes. Is there a skip? Where are we at with that? Um, our legal counsel still fighting with that. Um, right now, it's on their court. Um, they, they will let us know and we'll continue to get updates from Mr. Ehrman and where we are. Um, he has been on that on his to-do list um, and we'll, we'll be more than happy to bring any updates from our legal counsel. Um, we're not going to give up this fight and it's a lot of money that we have to put in on our end. Yep. That is not our fault. So our goal is to recuperate every single penny. And that... Um that payment just went out last week, so that was quite a hefty payment. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. One of the, this is why I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say. A little say. bit louder. <clears throat> One of the only core and most biggest things that we're responsible for is our finances. It's really nothing other than that and policy and then this gentleman. Um, so I, I'm just going to reiterate again for everyone, and I want to make sure that we, I, I know for myself I'm expressing, I really, really don't like seeing, because if it, donations and things in here, the gifts and donations that are, that are provided and we need to follow processes or submit documentation or even have it approved by the board, getting it months later, um, is really, really, it, 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 I don't like it. Um, and I think in the short term, I'm gonna say again, <laughs> over and repeatedly, it, that needs to not happen anymore. Acknowledge. Be because I feel like that responsibility again lies here, and if we can't have that consistent, or that return in what we need in order to be able to have that, that confidence, <laughs> then then we're not doing what we're supposed to do and making sure that that's happening. So 
Um, I know, can we get Mr. Ehrman's uh, latest update on whatever that may be as far as for the gym floor and what we're going to get back, if we're going to get back anything? Um, you can send that to us as the board whenever you have something from him. And then I, I don't know how else to impress on everyone, um, especially, I mean, I, I know we try to give as much support to, to the superintendent so that you can support the CFO. But again, to everyone in, in their processes and what they need to do, if you're not sure, please make sure you're asking um, because the, it, it's, it, those are my questions right away when I saw what was in consent as far as donations and contributions or donations that are being presented that were received in December and it's March now. Is that typical or is it, or can we shorten that up or make sure that we're at least catching up or keeping all of those things um, in a timely manner so that we have some kind of a true mm -hmm. It's reflection. part of our, guard, our guidelines um, in finance that we have to deposit within five days of receipt. Yeah. Um, and that's part of the what the auditors look at us exactly. for. So um, I think we did talk about a plan that we might have to help um, rectify that issue or at least, you know, um, hold some accountability um, so that maybe we can be on track and, and it not happen. So um, we have a few things that we discussed actually today that we would like to put in place so that we can make sure that this doesn't happen. Okay. Well, we're going to lean on and press on you as much as we need to because, again, you're our only um, employee to make sure that those things are being carried through and taken care of. So that's all. Um, was there anything else, Ms. Rambo? That's it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Number five this evening is the Barbecue Reunified School District Principals Report. Yes. President Mudia, members of the board and members of the community as well as colleagues. At this point, let's give it up to our uh, designee, Ms. Pablo, from the far, far away land coming to present on behalf of Ms. Enriquez, welcome. Good evening, President Buendia, Governing Board members, and Mr. Diaz. We have submitted our board report in writing. I hope you have the opportunity to read it. Here is our video.
checking the next what? Yeah. The next patient. Oh, the next patient. We're checking all the patients. We to thank you again so much um i know and and uh and say thank you for putting a little extra on the video i noticed it was a little longer than usual not that not that i count but i was like it was really good to see you guys celebrating it a little bit more um is there any any feedback you feel like you want to give something you want to highlight that you really want don't want us to miss in your report um, I think this month we really focused on reading and having guests come and read. And we had a lot of people <coughs> come and read to the kids, and they they really liked it. They enjoyed having all of the readers come, and it was a highlight for the month. Awesome. Uh, any other questions from the board? Comments? <laughs> <laughs> I did notice again that the as far as the the pre to mid testings are are looking a, a little bit better, which I'm really grateful for and thankful for. So, just to acknowledge that. So, yeah, good our, job to you guys. Our second grade team is working really hard. Definitely. Third grade too. <laughs> well, if in, if there's nothing else, thank you so much, Pablo. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good evening, President Buendia, board members, and Superintendent Diaz. So I turned in my board report, and I hope you had a chance to read it. Um, the biggest highlight uh, that I do want to mention is um, to say thank you to JOM, hopefully they're listening, um, to let them know um, we do really appreciate that they were able to sponsor our two assemblies, the MASH unit and the BMX show to help us um, prevent drug use on our campus um, because we do care about our students. And so we want to um, make sure that we tell our students that um, drugs do hurt your body. And so we want to um, try and prevent it.
So, uh, did anybody know what we were learning yesterday? Elliot? Awesome, Miss Begay. Thank you so much. Qu uh, questions from the board? Any comments? Miss Vance, you didn't highlight your um, attendance. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's because all my classes are perfect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, I again, I know I mentioned before about the and, and please, if there's any other way that we can we can show. Appreciation to JOM for those were I mean, what I was able to attend and participate in as far as the the assemblies. Uh, I'm I'm grateful, and so wherever you know whatever we can do to show them appreciation, however we can help support whatever you need, let me know or let us know. Um, but thank you so much for looking for those types of things for our kids. It's really it's really great. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Leva, let's give her a big hand. Welcome aboard. You're next. Good evening, President Wendia, Governing Board members, Mr. Diaz, and community members. I have submitted my report. Hopefully, you've had a chance to look it over. And after the video, I will be glad to answer questions.
was a short your, month uh, and it went by really fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Ms. Leva, and, and to the staff at uh, Secondary. Anything you feel like you want to highlight? I know there's a lot, but I don't want to. Um, I, a couple of things I want to highlight. The uh, Last month I had talked about teachers doing some PLC training and then bringing it back to the teacher leaders did it, and then they brought it back to their teams. And we had um, uh, our second meeting last Wednesday, and ADE happened to be here, and she, I let her go in because I didn't want to intimidate them anymore. And she was very impressed on how well our teachers have taken the PLC training that they did, and they're implementing it with their teams. We are really looking at data a lot more effectively now instead of bringing it to the table and then staring at each other. Um, now we're, we're creating the agenda ahead of time. We're having those conversations and we're making the changes immediately the following week. So I'm hoping that next month I can share what some of the, that data looks like for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much for that. Anything else from the board? Keep up the amazing work. Thank you. Thank you. Give it up. Mr. Fox. Welcome, Mr. Fox. Good evening again, President Buendia, board members, Superintendent Diaz, and the remainder of the crowd. I've turned in my report. I hope you have had the time to review it. And play that video, please. <laughs> What I'd like to just add on the video is all of those pictures, they are of taken here in cells, whether it be sunset or sunrise. So you notice Mel, uh, Barbecue Brew Peak, you notice mm -hmm. um, Kit Peak, uh, our friendly horses. We left out the dogs. We don't want to promote too many of them. But <laughs> all that nature is within eye shot of our parking lot, with the exception of the bird that was found uh, on a nature hike to see if there was water in the pond. Any questions regarding the written It's just stuff? the same question I've been asking. Is there anything you feel like you may want to make sure is highlighted that we're that we want, you don't well, want us to miss? You know, it's not highlighting. It might be low lighting. It's actually how hard we're working. Well, we're working very hard on our attendance. Um, we're finding that that we've moved to seven periods. We are running into the numbers looking lower than they have in the past. And I've been talking with a few folks in the district about why that is. Oh. Um, how many hours are required to get a half day or full day? Because at this point, I just see full day absence if they've missed two out of seven periods. Mm -hmm. um, so we're working on that. So those numbers should go up, but I don't want to minimize the fact that they do. The, the 12th grade looks pretty scary. I think it was, again, it's a low light, but it's something that it's we have to look at. We have to consider. Um, yeah, they're at... Um, like what it says is a 44%. And I know that's not exactly 100% accurate. I don't think it's 90, but I most certainly don't think that we've gone down. So I've uh, always been curious how you calculate it with your 
the attendance. Uh, we take it first period, second period, third period, fourth period, fifth period, sixth period, seventh period, and then we let Synergy do its thing. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I'm not sure how many minutes constitutes, because we're new to this section, how many minutes constitutes half day, full day, and do I see what a half day looks like oh. on the attendance? Okay. Mr. President, would you? Yes, sir. And members of the board. Um, I want to bring out or point out uh, the changes that took place over the winter break and how we re-image um, accelerated school. Um, after December, all of the students, they have now uh, six periods. Seven. Could seven count periods. Home room as a period. And um, now um, the attendance is taken every single hour. So um, the students, they need to be present every single period. And this is how, moving forward, the attendance will be calculated for the campus as well. Um, we continue to work in how we're going to be adding uh, the online system. Um, that will also help uh, not only a great deal with attendance, but also a great deal with uh, students continue to have access uh, off campus. And I'd just like to add the email came in just tonight as we were sitting here from the state. So I'll share that. I've shared it with Tanya. I'll bring bring an update again. on that. I was just curious, yes. I saw the, on your video, do your plants are growing back there? They're doing well. That's our that's our front garden. Um, it's kind of cool. You see kids out there picking around and they're eating the green beans. Oh, um, it's green. What is, yeah. is that what you're growing? Is yeah, that had that real pretty purple flower. That's a green bean vine that's just oh. there. But there's, um, Mr. Alvarez has lettuce. He's got, he has mm. broccoli. Um, leave it to Mr. Alvarez to, to bring nature to us. Um, so we're, it's a small little garden, but it's very well taken care of. And, and uh, the students, the 10 or 11, that care for it every single day, water it, make sure that the, the troughs are right. They take a lot of pride in it, and uh, we, we love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank okay. you, principals. Thank you, Mr. Diaz. <laughs> Well, moving on with our agenda number six is the barbecue reunion of high school district governing board member reports. I have a short one. I even I even thought about it in the moment while I was doing work the other day, and so I wrote it down <laughs> because I didn't want to forget it. Um, be very brief, but I want to make sure to impress or at least express from my my my. Uh, um, participation in in much more of the um, I guess walkthroughs of, of some of the campuses and and, and I really want to uh, I guess express from my end the honor that I feel to be able to participate but mostly to be able to see learn feel and engage in what it is to, to um, see how hard you work, how hard each of our teachers, each of our administrators, each of our, and, and, our, and our superintendent truly give, um, and administrative staff, um, I forget the titles of, of everybody here. However, everybody who puts in so much is, is s such a blessing, I think, to each, of, each and every one of, of, of our students. Um, there was some discussion I know that we had at one of the walkthroughs, and I won't be specific, but what I will say is that if at any moment there are any teachers in any to any who are graded based on whatever it is that we're utilizing to 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 grade per se their their effectiveness in the classroom, um, I don't want them to to walk away with the sense of they're not doing enough or they're not getting what they should be getting, whether uh, whether they are effective or ineffective or, or basic and whatever the word verbiage is on the um, on the sheet thing see this is why I <laughs> this is why it's good to be involved um, but what I really want to say is that hopefully the more that you see us or the more that you have the engagement of not only the board but and I, and I know you see administrators and everyone else much more so than than the board but what I just want to really, really try and get across to each and every individual who is committing themselves to, to teaching our students and really giving it their all is that I, for one, as a board, member of the board, am, am so proud to see the progress and the hard work, the effort, and the commitment 
that it is noticed and that I do give my two cents at these at these uh, walkthroughs. I know all of us do. If ever we're in the same room together, it is never in in the way that we would ever question what it is you do in your profession. But it is always to support and encourage and to commit as much as we have in seeing your successes and in your goals and everything that you are trying to achieve. Um, I know that engaging and understanding much more gives us a better way to, to support not only what are not only our students but our teachers as well. So I just want to say again, you know, to be able to see the passion, the love, the effort, and overall your professionalism as teachers, as administrators, or as individuals who come here every day, sometimes from far, far away, it is truly um, appreciated. And and no matter what um, comes of it, I just know the capabilities and the possibilities are that much more simply because of your effort to be here every day and to, and to be a part of this district. So I, I wanted to express that and I, and I truly want to be as present and I'm hoping that the presence is being genuinely felt that, that it is not to act as though I know better or I can critique you. I think that I do want to understand and feel much more confident about not only this role, but specifically our support for the profession and, and the schools and everything that y'all do. So um, that is from me to, to anyone else that needs to or feels like they're not, they're not doing what they should be or not doing what, not meeting where they feel like they are. And, and because trust me, I have seen amazing things in, in, a, in one walkthrough to the next walkthrough a few months later progression, excellence, and just commitment is just amazing. So that is what my report will consist of because I have been trying to be much more um, open to the, the opportunities that we have as board to, to, be, to be involved. Um, and I don't mean that in any way other than I'm, I'm grateful that I can be involved because I know not, much of, not many of us can be um, but I'm also hopeful that it helps the board to feel confident that, you know, these, these are the things that, that I'm observing and it is being done and we have very good um, individuals working for us and for our students and for our parents and our communities and all of those things that we're here to, to ensure that we're speaking for and, 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 you know, doing this job for. So. Um, the last, the other thing that I just wanted to mention, um, in, 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 I guess, closing, um, is the, uh, well, I mentioned earlier, it, any, any time that we can create any form of opportunity for our students, I'm so glad that y'all are, are, are really trying to grab it, feel comfortable in bringing it, and, and that we genuinely can have a conversation or see if we can make it work. It is what I imagine um, if I were back in school, I would really truly engage with and want to have as well. Um, but I also understand that right now it is a completely different environment, time and world that our students are growing up in. Um, but y'all are doing amazing things, so that's that's genuinely what I want to say um, from from my end on what I've been able to observe in the last month and what I look forward to continuing to observe throughout the school year. So please, you know, I know it's a bit scary when you see us walking around that we're <laughs> scary, <laughs> but <laughs> nonetheless, um, hopefully it gets easier. Um, I know it's easy for me to say that because y'all are the ones doing it, but um, we see you, and it and it's very much um, observed. So, anything else from the board? Board? Yeah, I just wanted to share that I did. I was able to attend the um, the new uh, the orientation for uh, potential employees uh, uh, 
potential teachers wanting to come to the district. And um, I thought I see a whole bunch of cars parked out there. <laughs> but uh, we actually had one, one, and I think we just really made him feel special. <laughs> Um, we had the district office here introducing themselves, telling about what they do and, you know, and how they can assist um, the employee, the potential employee. And, and Ella and I were there and also welcomed him here. And um, I'm hoping that, you know, he's looking at applying, especially if we do have those openings. Um, but I th that was the first time I think that's ever been done. I think you will. Con I hope that you continue to do that just to make sure that. Second year. Yeah, oh, second year. year. Okay. And you only do it once. Um, last year we do it, we did it three different times. Oh. This is our first one. Uh, depending on how many more recruitment opportunities we have, okay. um, we encourage them to come and and have a visit mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. or tour of the district. Yeah, I th and that was the first one I attended, so it was it was a great. Um, opportunity and like I said, I think we made him real special. <laughs> uh, okay. One counts. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Whatever we can get. Uh -huh. I love it. Thank you, Miss Sylvia. Anything in advance? Not this month. No problem. Miss Ella, are you still there? I keep forgetting. I'm so sorry. You have any report? Uh no, I don't have anything, but I did uh, attend uh, the same um uh, teacher, whether they um, trying to get new teachers you know, that day, but we only had one, and I was just going to ask her, did he did he apply for the job? Probably not. A work in progress. <laughs> um, he did mention there were two different opportunities, and it was a fact the because of the attention and and the tour that we made him feel welcomed. Mm -hmm. So we're working. Okay. One at yeah, it uh, seems like he enjoyed everything uh, what what we uh, was presented to him. So I was hoping that um, you know he would come you know attend our school. Um, that that's all I have, uh, Mr. Bandia. So do we. Thank you, Miss Sella. <laughs> I said so do we. <laughs> we. We hope that we he chooses us. I believe he tur he turned in an application. Um, but he has a few follow-up questions okay. that we still need to address. Do your thing. <laughs> All righty. Thank you, Ms. Ella. Uh, we'll move on. Number seven is our Barbecue Unified School District Superintendent's Report. Mr. Diaz. President Mordia, members of the board, members of the community, co-leaders, and respected teachers are still present. Thank you for being here tonight. I, a few highlights that I want to point out, not only my report, but also some of my director's report. Um, February it was an, a very busy month. I want to thank um, every single one for the ongoing support and commitment. Um, I want to celebrate um, the ongoing collaboration with uh, TOCC and also uh, Ms. Hendricks representing both entities um, in, in the ability uh, hopefully have an academy um, starting next year. Um, also, um, for all of our principals that took the time and energy um, to collaborate um, in, in the recruitment at the U of A, but also participating the entire team in introducing themselves as part of the recruitment. Um, I want to thank the governing board for helping us in, in connecting not only with the community, but uh, not only supporting during the walkthroughs, um, during our visit um, with some of the community uh, meetings that we attended during the month of February. Um, also, including uh, Pesinimo, that was one of the ones that we attended. I want to thank Ms. Brewster and our student council. Uh, this month they were not able to present, but to be able to continue to be present in President Mundia, thank you for also being present during that meeting. Um, and a few uh, directors of transportation as well as operations for being available to answer some questions for our student council and address their concerns as young leaders. And uh, during the month of February, February I want to thank uh, our principals and the, the um, assistant principals and SIS for participating on what are going to be the next steps, not only to complete the year based on the data that we collected during the first semester, but also working on what are we going to be focusing on uh, for next school year. 
as part of our reports, I want to thank um, Ms. Aggie Hart for the 19,828 pounds that were distributed during the shortest month of the year. So congratulations of all of the um, A hundred and fifty-eight pantry um, families that were served um, for a hundred fifty-eight uh, households, and uh, for adults um, coming in and, and, and taking advantage, they, they had a total of two hundred and fifty-seven for the month, and a total of three hundred and eighty-four children that were served during that month. A big thank and appreciation for the Sunrise House. Um, I want to. Also, thank um, um, the special ed department for highlighting and extending during the month of uh, February in the report, highlighting we have three um, special ed members um, that had been working in, spe in our special ed department for over 20 years. So thank you for their commitment and their support. Uh, for, transportation, uh, for transportation, thank you for also celebrating the two members of the team that had been for over 20 years as part of your report. And also to also welcome um, or some student apprentices into your department um, as part of the um, uh, accelerated school uh, kids are interested and to be able to provide that opportunity to see what it would be like to be in transportation. Thank you for welcoming that. Um, um, and having said, oh, I have one more. Um, but that's uh, an item on its own, so I'll wait for the summer school. Uh, so at this point, if you don't mind, Daniel, playing our video uh, representing all of the different activities for the month of February uh, through the lens of... Yeah.
<laughs> Any questions? No, my three o'clock. Good job. Thank you for keeping us informed. We'll try it. <laughs> okay, number eight is our coaches and club sponsors and approved positions. Andre Antone for uh, B Barbecue High School Assistant Basketball Coach. Again, board, this is information. Baseball. I, huh? Baseball. Sorry, baseball coach. Information items only, um, just for your information. <laughs> number, uh, sorry, letter F is our action items this evening. Number one is the second reading at the Barbecue Unified School District uh, Policy Advisories. Are there any questions, comments, questions? If not, is there a motion to approve? Uh, so moved. I have a motion by Ms. Sylvia Hendricks, Namahe Damch. Ms. Kathleen Vett. All those in favor, motion to walk over here. Masapo. Kathleen Vett. Sylvia Hendricks. Masapo. Ellen Hendricks. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Number two is discussion and possible approval of the 2024-2025 Barbecue Reunified School District Employee Evaluation Tool, Mr. Diaz. Uh, President Mordia and Governing Board members, uh, we are on a second year uh, of using um, this specific uh, uh, program to be able to um, um, manage the evaluation process for all of our employees. Um, we just want to continue um, our contract with this company. So the Office of the Superintendent is recommending the approval of renewing the contract with the advanced evaluation software to support the evaluation process. Uh, the contract with the advanced will uh, cover the evaluation from July 1st all the way to June 30th of 2025. Okay, without any objection, the item is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Sylvie Hendricks. All those in favor, Miss Greasewood? Aye. I'm sorry. Uh, number three this evening discussion and possible approval of the BUSD summer school program 2024. Mr. Diaz. President Mundia, members of the board and members of the community, this is a, once again an exciting, exciting time to be able to come before you so, to approve our summer school program, which is similar to the previous year. Um, we're going to have, or we're planning to have a, a three week for primary and a four week for secondary uh, students, um, starting from May 27th um, and June 13th for um, elementary students, K through um, Eight, um, and also uh, starting on the same date and all the way to June 20th for uh, 9 through 12 students. Uh, we have included a list of all of the positions. Uh, this is still going to be covered through um, um, <laughs> through ESSER funding. Um, but I now I saw that our presenter is here. Sorry, I did not notice it earlier. So she's knocked on, she's sneaked in. So um, with your support, I would like to call on our Department of Curriculum Instruction, the math department, to present our um, project for summer school. Ms. Kinsey, let's give it up for Ms. Kinsey, everybody. Come on down, Ms. Kinsey. Well, the price is right. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, President Bondia, Governing Board Members, Superintendent Diaz. Um, I hope you had a, a chance to review the summer school flyers and the memo. Um, and so like Mr. Diaz was saying, we do have the attached calendar there. Um, and so nine, uh, kinder through eighth grade will have three weeks of summer school. And then our nine through 12 students will have four weeks for summer school. We have our flyer. <laughs> and if you don't mind opening the second document, then with a calendar just a little bit lower there. There you go. Yeah. And so um, included in that calendar, but we don't have the dates specifically designated, there are some planning hours for our K-8 instructors um, within that time between May 16th and May 24th, so they'll have some chance to plan for um, the summer school activities. We do have the 27th off for the holiday. And um, do you have any questions? Just one yes. from me. Um, 
how much are we committing and are we committing and is there is there an estimate or guesstimate on our seniors if they're if they're in need and need to be in here we don't want to use space or make sure there is this space for them yeah so we at this moment don't have the numbers available um, that's not something that I have currently in front of me, um, but we do have allocated for um, nine through 12. We do have eight teachers allocated, so if we do have the need for it, budget-wise allocated, <laughs> so if we do have the need for it, um, we can definitely support any of our students that are in need of credit recovery ninth through 12th grade. Perfect. Ms. Sylvia. So is the summer school, um, um, students are they recommended for summer school or is it open to all students so we are going to have some targeted interventions so there will be recommendations made based on some assessment data um, teacher recommendations site admin recommendations um, but we are planning on having room for students to opt in as well um, but considering the goals that we have as a district can, um, for mastery and proficiency, we really wanna make sure that we're supporting those students that really need that targeted support. Um, but we are not in a place right now that we're planning on excluding students who are interested. But we do wanna keep those ratios of students to teachers fairly low, um, just to make sure that those students get that individualized attention that they need. What, what is your estimate and your and how many students that you're going to be? I don't think we have a, a current estimate, um, but we're trying to keep those numbers low. Yeah, right now we right. have um, two teachers per grade level K-8. And the, the, on the, on the um, calendar for May, you have, a, what's the highlight in pink? Is that the preparation? That is our last day of the school year, of the current school year. Before the that is the, the current school year. I just had to have that blocked out in my brain as, as taken up. Um, so the May 1st through the 14th are school days, and the 15th is the last. Oh, it's the regular. Yeah, it's just oh, the regular school year. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and the preparations or the, um, for the teachers to be, get ready for, what, where, where were they in the calendar? So we don't have those days specifically allocated on the calendar because we are planning on hiring a coordinator. Okay. Um, and so we wanna work with that person to find days that work well for them. Mm -hmm. So instead of just choosing two days that seem right for us, we wanna wait until that moment is ready to go. Um, and then we can solidify those dates. And what is your timeline to get the... Um, so once we have, um, if this moves forward today at today's board meeting, we are planning on sending out um, a survey to staff tomorrow morning, um, letting them express their interest. We will then conduct interviews and bring their names to the board um, in the April board meeting. Okay. Ms. Okay. Ms. Ella, any questions? So no. I guess she's muted because she's trying to talk. Oh. Ella, you're muted if you're trying to talk. <clears throat> Unmute. Okay. Mr. Diaz. Uh, President Medea and members of the board, just a oh. reminder that, go ahead. Go ahead, Ella. I'm sorry. Um, can you hear me? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> I think, um, the teachers and counselors should know which students uh, need to take this um, uh, tutoring and not recommend them, but I mean, they, they should make them go to school and if they want to be passing their grades, you know, and, and be at the level that they're supposed, supposed to be at. And it's, uh, the seniors and they should uh, take care of their um, credits if they haven't earned it. So. And uh, I think um, the opportunities are always open uh, for them, but some of them don't take advantage of it. And I'd and also like to ask if um, having all this um, tutoring year after year after year, and uh, uh, is there any improvement in any of these students that are taking them? So that, that's my question. So for our tutoring students, we do see some growth. So that is a comparison data point that we look at um, when it comes to all of our benchmark assessments for second grade um, all the way through 12th grade. So we do look at those students that have been um, in the targeted tutoring and we are seeing um, 
more growth than their peers in most cases. Um, and so when it comes to your, your comment, Ms. Greasewood, about um, recommending students and forcing them <laughs> to be in tutoring, um, we would love to have that as an opportunity, but the best that we can do is um, have our coordinator communicate to the families of the students who are being recommended the importance of them being there. Um, that's ultimately the most that we can do is really stress the importance um, academically of the students being in summer school if they're recommended for it. Do, do, was that Ella? Was that Miss Ella? <clears throat> uh, there's also um, on this new um, uh, policies that we just approved, and uh, there's a uh, there's. Um, there's some new uh, issues in there that uh, that's part of the requirement, which is um, the um, testing that has to do the same testing as they do with uh, immigration. And um, they have to, there's a hundred questions. They're supposed to at least answer 60 of them to pass or fail, and that should be in their record. And uh, so that's, those are coming up very soon. So they need to really uh, emphasize on these um, new, new um, uh, policies that um, is written up in this last, uh, this new one that we just passed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ella. Yeah, and that is absolutely something that we can keep in consideration for our ninth through 12th students and even our seventh and eighth graders um, is finding ways that we can support that academic growth with regards to the civics test as per board policy. And it may be, we probably have this information, but it'd be good to see some data points, really something that maybe, maybe you have just to share. Nothing specific, but like for, for Ms. Ellis, based on Ms. Ellis question For about, the tutoring growth? Oh. I know it's big, ask, it's but just buried but, deep in my Google Drive. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, Mr. Diaz. No, I just wanted to remind our governing board um, on our weekly uh, superintendent highlights report on page four. We do have a timeline. Uh, I know you asked for the timeline. It is on page four. Um, it's been there since the beginning of the timeline that we're following regarding our summer school program. We are on track. Um, we are. Uh, scheduled to have the um, memo approved today and our goal is to have um, the staff approved by April uh, board meeting. So we are on schedule, but if you would like to learn more about the timeline that we're following uh, for our summer school program, it is on our weekly um, superintendent's report, page four. Did you have another question, Ella? No, I don't. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Hendricks. No, I, I have no questions. Uh, if there are no other questions, I have one I'd more. like to read it. Real quick. <laughs> transportation is um, good. Or what are we doing on transportation, transportation site for and, this? And so that's a conversation that we've started with Mr. B. Um, but once we have an idea of um, number of staff <laughs> interested, things approved, that is a conversation um, that we're going to have with him. We have it built in within our own personal checks and balances timeline. Um, we didn't want to start that conversation fully, but we did have a preliminary conversation about the dates and the times. Um, and so once the memo, if it's approved this evening, um, we will finalize that conversation and, and, and have um, numbers for bus routes and buses and all that good stuff. Was there a total, <laughs> was there a total number of students that were anticipating? Page one? Yes, on page, page one. Page one, I was looking for it, sorry. Okay. That's it. We will go ahead and, if no other questions, uh, uh, make a motion to approve. I have a motion by Ms. Sylvia Hendricks. Second, Second by Ms. Kathleen Vance. All those in favor of the motion? Juan Bonilla. Masapo. Kathleen Vance. Masapo. Masapo. Ms. Greaseway? Aye. I don't know what's wrong with my microphone. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ella. We heard you. President Mundia. Yes, it is. Um, sir, I made a mistake. Um, I was reminded that as part of my superintendent report, there was also a video that was put together uh, from the Sunrise House. And my mistake, I should have pointed it out. Uh, and Sorry. I already passed it. So um, if you have time, on, please go back and see it in your own time. It's 
but I take responsibility. That's my mistake for not putting it up to Daniel. Okay, well, bring it back next time. okay. thank you. So and I apologize for. Bring it back next month. I'm sorry. I was going to mention maybe bring it back next month. Okay, so thank you, and I apologize for my employee that um, they put they spend the time and energy, and my mistake for not pointing that out. Letter G this evening is our consent agenda. If there are no objections, a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second, second by Miss Kathleen Vance. All those in favor, one two. Mosapo. Kathleen Vance. <coughs> Mosapo. Aye. Letter H is our request for future agenda items. I think one of the items I think was mentioned earlier in regards to the promotion and people that are having to, I would like to hear uh, about the graduation, uh, what we're looking at as far as graduation, how many people are, are on track, um, both from the, uh, the um, IOS and the high school. Accelerated and. Accelerated, uh, yeah. And the adjustment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna pause you because we had to have it on the agenda. This will be in the future. <laughs> Thank you. I apologize. I, I'm glad that you're super ready. <laughs> but we'll, we'll put it on the agenda and we'll have, we'll have it presented. Would you like that as a standalone item, or do you want it as part of the principal's report? Separate item. Separate it's item. fine because I think I want the public to also be able to observe and see. It's good for the communities and the parents to, s to know if they don't know. Okay. And push, push, push your parent portal so they understand. <laughs> so they know where they can see the info, too, again. Was that it, Miss Silver? Anything future? Well, as mentioned earlier about the um, 2024 class update. I have it all as part of my future items. I included it. Okay. Okay. Anything, Ben? No, you got Nisha's coming up. You got MSUA coming up April 15th. Uh, summer Lodge opens up, so it's pretty free and clear for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually just sent you a link to the presentation so if you get a chance, go ahead and watch it. Again, I've already had it for next month. So okay, great. Super duper. All right, if summer. that's it. I know um, for the summer, um, we are looking to having two days during the summer for um, a policy review. Okay. Um, we have so tentative days um, that we'll, we, can, we can share those with you via email as well. Okay. But we want to give you plenty of time to um, say the date on your calendar. It'll be during the month of June. Um, and tentatively, we have it for the 27th and 28th of June. Okay. We'll put it on your calendar as tentative um, oh. and save the date. I might have something on the 27th. Ben, do you know when the summer leadership is scheduled for? I think it's the 5th. I think it's the 5th through the 6th through the 8th, I That's think. Yes. I have it on the 5th, 6th, and 7th, the ASBA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ben, I may not be able to attend. But check with me, but I may not be able to go to summer leadership. Oh, okay. Well, again, I'll put those here, but... Okay. If, okay. Again, uh, go ahead. we're not to, to, to add to the... Again, I just wanted to, the um, application for the scholarships are still open. I think uh, it closes on March 29th, I think. So please encourage our seniors to apply. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Sylvia Hendricks. Masapo. Masapo. Ms. Griswold? Aye.
It is 8.06 p.m. We are adjourned.